Hey guys. So yeah, we won the uh, location mobile location-based marketing award last time. It was usually when you win an award, you get this trophy. We got this belt, like this boxing belt. I'm not sure if you have seen it. Like one of the best trophies we ever won. It's in the office. People wear it every single day. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Amazing trophy. So a lot of you guys are interested in proximity, beacons, etc. Uh, I'm not going to give you a bit of glimpse into the most comprehensive, the most detailed, and the most insightful uh, overview of what's going on in the proximity-based uh, marketing space. So just quickly about our company first, Unicast. We are the world's largest network of proximity solution providers. We work with 55 uh, PSPs, proximity solution providers, that have more than 1.4 million beacons deployed globally. And the way we fit into the whole proximity marketing ecosystem is that on the left-hand side here, you have retailer brands uh, that work together with the proximity vendor. So the proximity vendor deploys beacons, create great user experiences, push notification, coupons, analytics, etc. The interesting part here that we find is that every time a customer interacts with proximity technologies, they leave a digital footprint behind. The challenge is that with 300 different proximity companies, all this data is fragmented, right? So Unicast, we are the aggregator. Working with all these companies, uh, harmonizing, aggregating this data onto one platform so that all this data can now be used for online marketing. So if you are a retailer or brand that has deployed beacons, you can now use your own first party data to retarget your own customers to bring them back to the store, or you can choose to monetize your data and sell it to others. So that's kind of the core of what, what Unicast does. Uh, but when we look at the proximity space, this is how it looks like. It's super fragmented. In just two years, there's more than 350 companies that offer different solutions within beacons, Wi-Fi, NFC, QR codes, and so on. So a year ago, we took a step back and said, wow, this is such a crowded place. How can a retailer or a brand find the right proximity vendor? If they go to Google, you type in beacons, Wi-Fi, geofencing, you get a few companies, right? So what we saw that there's a need to bridge retail and brands looking for a proximity vendor with the actual vendors out there. So we created Proxbook. Proxbook is the Facebook for the proximity industry. So if you're a proximity provider, you can create your profile, you can list your use cases, your verticals, your technologies, you can really brag about what you do. And if you're a retail brand looking for such solutions, you can go onto Proxbook and you can say, so I'm looking for Wi-Fi and beacons and analytics in Germany in hospitality. And then boom, you get those three services, those three companies that can pr provide you such technologies. It's a great way to bridge retailer brands with proximity vendors. So besides the teeing up the market, uh, Proxbook also gives us a lot of insight, a lot of data about what is actually going on in the space. And the whole proximity beacon space is still fairly new. Uh, and in a new market, it's always challenging to get the real overview. And that's what we can provide. So every quarter, we release the Proxbook report based on data from our 300 and now 50 proximity companies on Proxbook. So we release the, proximity, the Proxbook report every quarter. We've done it uh, four times. It's fascinating to see the development. I'm going to now share you some insight from the Q1 uh, report that came out a month ago. Uh, so you can really understand what is going on in this space, besides what you read every day in the news and on the, on the web. First of all, we categorize proximity companies into five different categories. You have the ones that do the apps. You have a lot of consultancy firms. But the core of these companies are either the ones that provide the hardware, roughly 10%, kind of pure hardware companies. You have a bunch, 31%, that are platform and hardware. So they actually offer the full stack solution. But the majority of these proximity companies are software companies that are hardware agnostic, but that build solutions on top of the existing hardware out there. And we see that these uh, software companies are starting to differentiate. Like people have asked me a lot of times, so 350 different proximity companies, will this be consolidated? Like is there room for that many companies? When we launched Proxbook a year ago, we thought that we had reached peak. That was 80 companies. So from June last year until June this year, we've gone from 80 to 350. And we don't believe that this market will be consolidated because 
all these companies are starting to focus on different verticals, different technologies, and different use cases. And it's very different to provide a proximity solution for a sports stadium and a retail store and an airport. So we still believe that with this world now being censored up, there's a huge need for many different proximity solution providers to offer kind of those specific campaigns, those, those specific technologies. So looking at the technologies, what's out there? Well, beacons, geofencing, of course, that's uh, the core of all these proximity companies. But what's interesting is to see that Wi-Fi is picking up. Like more and more companies do also provide Wi-Fi as part of their solution. NFC hasn't really started yet. I think that we're all looking for and waiting for until Apple includes NFC in their phone. That's when this becomes really interesting. But what is actually interesting is that if you look at QR codes, I thought QR codes was completely dead. But it's actually picking up. A lot of companies are offering QR codes. A lot of retailers and brands are using QR, QR, QR codes. And we've seen that growth every quarter by quarter the last year. Always, in most cases, in connection with beacons. So you use beacons kind of to pull people into the store, and then you end the purchase or end the user journey with the QR code. On the product side, it's been a massive focus on push notifications. And I think we're all tired of reading of push not notifications. You walk into a store, you get a message, blah, blah, blah. It's great when it works. It's terrible when it doesn't work. But what's interesting to see is that now retail and brands are using proximity solutions not to send out the push, push message. They also use it for analytics. But the three main areas where there's the most growth, that is to use beacons as a proximity advertising network, kind of similar to what Swirl and InMarket is offering. Online retargeting, meaning that you deploy beacons or other proximity uh, solutions, but you don't send out anything. You only collect the data, you understand your users, and then you retarget them online when they are at home with the goal to bring them back to the store. Data monetization. I think a lot of uh, retail brands that we speak to have a hard time figuring out, okay, what's the value of deploying beacons? I deploy beacons, I deploy other proximity solutions, but when can I see a ROI? The second, they include data monetization as part of that mix. Very easy for them to see, hey, I can actually make money of this. Not by increasing my basket, but by selling this data to others that are interested in this. Industry verticals, retail, shopping malls, that's kind of what we're reading about in the press all the time. What we see from the Proxbrook report is that proximity technologies aren't only used in retail and shopping malls. It's used in a lot of different verticals. Everything from sports stadium to museums, conferences, healthcare, automotive, banking, etc. which is to me, a sign that when retail usually uh, adopts new te technology first, now is when other verticals, other retailers, other uh, industries are catching up. A few verticals that are picking up now is, especially in a sports stadium field, like to give seat recommendations, to provide info when you get into the stadium. Uh, music festivals are deploying a lot of beacons now. One is to navigate people around these very large uh, places, but equally to provide info to them. So who's playing? When are they playing? Gas station is one of the verticals that we believe very heavily in the next, next year. We know that Circle K, we know that Gas Buddy have large global proximity solutions, and it's, it ties very much into their goal, how to bring people from the pump into the store. Right? You can put all this signage up, but if, if you can send a message to that person, that is next to the pump and bring him into the store, huge win. And this is the most interesting part I found. So how many beacons are out there? And I'm now talking about mainly beacons. Uh, there was a kind of beating in the press uh, around Christmas time. A lot of journalists said, oh, there's, there's no beacons out there. This is only a hoax. People talk about it. Uh, I haven't seen a beacon. I, I haven't receive a push notification. But we actually see from the Proxmo report that there's a pretty huge amount of beacons that are being deployed globally. So as of Q1, we were at just about six million beacons. And you can see that it has increased from below one million to six million in less than a year. 
What's more interesting here is that if you look at the forecast, where, where is the market going? Uh, you guys are probably familiar with ABR research. They follow the proximity space very closely and the beacon space. Uh, do comprehensive research to really project where is the market heading. They believe that by 2020 there will be 400 million beacons deployed globally. It's a huge number, right? And we are at 6 million today. So when we looked at what was their forecast for uh, 2015, their forecast was 5.3 million beacons. We saw 5.1. Their forecast for end of this year, it's 8 million beacons. And we see 7.2 million beacons as of today. Meaning that we're already on our way to reach those 400 million beacons by 2020. Of course, we need a massive growth, but I think if you look at how the beacon stand standards are evolving, this is where a lot of things will happen. So when uh, beacons were announced, when it was launched back in June 2013, Apple came out with iBeacon, and it has become kind of the, the, the equivalent with beacons. Uh, that was about it. And most of companies today offer iBeacon as their primary beacon standard. But last June, uh, Google came out with Edistone, right? Very silently, not big, big shebang. But what we now see is that Edistone is picking up heavily. So going from close to 0% four quarters ago, now almost half of all the proximity companies offer Edistone as part of their package. And this is super interesting because what Edistone solves is adoption and penetration and scale. Because with beacons, with iBeacons, you need an app. With Edistone, you don't need that app. It is tied into the Chrome browser, tied into URLs. So the whole penetration and the whole adoption will happen way, way quicker. So this is one of the reasons why we and also ABR Research believe that yes, we will reach 400 million beacons the next uh, couple of years because Edistone opens up these possibilities heavily. And one of the challenges in this market has been that no one has shared what has been going on, right? It's a new industry. Brands and retailers are very skeptical to share what's happening, what they're doing right. But as a new industry, we need to share what's going on. We need to share the successes, and we also need to share fa failures. So what we did in Proxbook is that we compiled 100 different retail use cases. So this was last quarter. It was focusing on the retail segment. So if you want to know what your competitors are doing, and what other uh, companies are doing in this space. There's 100 use cases on Proxbook right now. And this is a great inspiration source. It's great to see how different companies are applying the beacon technology, geofencing, Wi-Fi, et cetera, so they can reach their business goals. It looks very much like this. We, get, we give you an overview of the technologies involved, the market, the objective, and uh, the results. I think this is something that we focus a lot on. If we want to grow this space, if we believe in proximity as a solution, then we also have to educate and educate and educate all the partners out there. So I encourage you, if you want to have the whole full report, uh, 40 pages, go to proxbook.com. It's free. It has a lot of great insight. You can easily read what is going to happen in the proximity space the next three quarters. Thank you. <laughs> if there's any questions, anything, happy to take a few. Yeah. No? Oh, cool. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Okay. Everyone was a little surprised by the, the QR codes data points. So that was interesting. So um, Chad Richards from um, uh, Yelp is up next. Chad recently joined Yelp from Apple, where he headed up their Maps um, initiative. And you may have seen some news yesterday about Yelp adding partners. And Chad is going to talk about